Hi, it's Michelle and I'm a certified holistic nutritionist and emotional eating expert. And today I wanted to talk about how emotions and our emotional eating impact our physical health. So if you are an emotional eater, you know that, hopefully you know that you go towards food when you're feeling a certain way or you start eating out of the blue and then realize after you are completely out of control that you've binge ate. So when I used to emotionally eat, what would happen to me would be, I would be five meals deep into eating something and then realize, oh, what was going on? I had to really go and look that there was an emotion under it all. So as an emotional eater, we might just think in that moment we're overeating and we might not notice how it's impacting our health or we are starting to notice how it's impacting our physical body. So what happens when we eat when we're not hungry? So there is true hunger and there's emotional hunger. And when we eat when we're not truly hungry, that means our body is not set up to digest food. So when we eat when we're hungry, we have gastric juices and enzymes that are secreted. Our body gets ready for food. When we eat out of emotional hunger, we're just taking food, we're eating in a rush, we're not chewing properly, we are not actually physically hungry, so our body's not wanting nourishment. We're eating and eating, we're eating a large amount of food, and after we're gonna feel bloated, we're gonna feel heavy, we're going to have chunks of food in our system, it's gonna drain our body of energy, trying to digest this food it didn't need. This will impact our digestion, our digestive tract, digestive tract. It impacts our microbiome, our gut, bacteria because there's so much big chunks of food not being digested it actually feeds the bad bacteria and this creates neurotoxins that impact our brain because the gut and the brain are connected via the vagus nerve they're in constant communication neurotransmitters are made in the gut so there's so much communication and then when we don't feel good after we've binged it's because we're we're sending the signal also to the brain and then we might spiral again and do this constantly or have many days of it or, or feel like such a failure. So I just want to say that this is, you know, your willpower and your self-control is not the reason this is happening. This is a much deeper issue, but you know, it is impacting your physical health. It is impacting your, um, your physical health in terms of right away your digestion. But as we impact our digestion over years and years, it starts impacting other parts of us. We might gain weight. We will have hormonal issues, stress issues, because we're not really looking at the root. Uh, and maybe when we were emotionally eating, it felt temporarily, it felt good. For the first while, it felt good because when we eat food, physiologically, it makes us feel good. And then, you know, when we eat more processed foods or the cakes and cookies, they give us an even bigger high because of the way they're processed. And so temporarily we feel good in our body, like we've sort of helped that emotion. But the truth is that emotion still lives in our body. It's in our nervous system. Emotions live in the body. Just like when we're stressed, there's cortisol or there's serotonin for happiness. Anytime we feel an emotion, it lives in the body. And if we haven't moved through it, so processed it, you know, transformed it and moved it out of our body, it's still there and it's still creating pain in our body, whether we're aware of it or not. In, and this is happening in our body. And let's take for example, if you had some kind of fear or anxiety and then you ate and it was temporarily gone, it doesn't mean that fear and anxiety disappeared. It's still there in the stomach and it's still creating sort of stress in that area of the body. And over time, we're gonna have weakness in that area of the body. Or if we have sadness in our heart, wherever we're feeling that emotion, over time, as we don't deal with it, it gets stronger and stronger. And then our body starts screaming at us. It starts talking to us in pain, in um, not feeling well, in lethargy, when we don't look at the emotion. And as an emotional eater, when we're probably not feeling great, we go back to the food. So we are simply just putting a band-aid on a problem. The food is not helping us. It's actually creating a worse problem. So what can we do about this? And this is exactly what, you know, I look at when um, clients go through my program. It is really looking at certain areas that are so important to impact um, us as emotional eaters, we need to look at these areas in order to get a handle on our emotional eating and really to move through them. So how do we move out of this? The first area that I emphasize is true nourishment and strategic digestion. If you noticed 
if you're an emotional eater, you probably haven't been eating the best. And sometimes even when we think we know what to eat, there's so much nutritional noise out there that we get confused and we start judging. This is, I'm eating healthy. I'm not eating healthy. I've looked at so many clients, food journals where they think they're eating really well, but I can see things that they're not looking at. And this is not to judge. There are health giving foods and there are health depleting foods. This is not about good or bad, but it's looking at what's going to nourish your body and then being strategic about those foods, being strategic with digestion and how they impact the body and really making sure you're nourishing the body. Because if you have used any kind of diet or any kind of plan um, over the years, then you know that you haven't been truly listening to your body, that it has been deprived this, cut this out and the body is now lacking and that digestion piece is missing. So it's important that we start nourishing the body and really being strategic with our digestion so we can kind of build up the body, build up the physical health of the body and to make sure that that nourishment is getting into our cells. Because if we've damaged our, our digestive system or, or had a lot of digestive issues, that means that nutrients are not getting into the body. The digestive tract is external to the body and if we're not getting, absorbing those nutrients, how can we have a strong body, right? So the second area that's so important is looking at body acceptance. And this is about looking at all of the negative things we have been saying to ourselves. Maybe we're in pain. Maybe we don't like the way our body looks. Whatever negative critical things we're saying or punishments we're giving to ourselves, that is impacting our body. Whatever we say to our body, it feels it. And so we need to really get to a place where we're accepting of where we're at in order to move forward. We also need to understand that our body has different rhythms and some days it's going to need more exercise or less, or, you know, it's, it might not have a rhythm yet because we might've damaged it over the years with all of this dieting and not being connected. We need to get back to this place of body acceptance where we're truly looking at our body, looking at how we're talking to ourselves to really start making, um, movement through our emotional eating and to get a handle on our health. And the third area is emotional wellness. So emotional wellness is so important to really get into those emotions that are under the emotional eating. So like I said, those emotions are not, you know, they're still there after we eat. They haven't gone anywhere. We need to actually get to them. So emotions live in our body. They're looping in our nervous system if we don't let them go. We need a process. And this is what I do with clients through a deeper somatic meditations um, and sometimes working one-on-one -on -one with them, we go deeper into the body and we connect and resolve um, this emotion because whenever we haven't processed an emotion, it's unresolved. And what does that mean? It's still a trauma. So emotions naturally flow through us and go to completion. But if we haven't, if we're holding them in, they're not complete and they create trauma and they create pain in our body. So we need to get there and we need to connect the emotion up. We need to integrate it and process through it in order to resolve it. And when we do that, we start hearing what the emotion is trying to, to get from us. It is asking us to meet a need or to feel the emotion, to see what we need to change in our life in order to move forward. If we ignore and push and suppress it, which is what we've been taught, it lives in our body screaming out for us to listen. So once we're able to process and move through the emotion at this deeper level, then we no longer need to take food to stop feeling it because we've felt it and it leaves the body. So these three areas, a true nourishment, body acceptance, and emotional wellness are so key to getting a handle on emotional eating and going deeper. When we do a diet or we just do exercise, that's very much on the surface. We need a holistic model. So if this resonates with you and you'd like more guidance, I invite you to get in touch and book a complimentary consult to see if I can be of service, if I can help you. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. And if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do that. And I look forward to sharing more with you and I hope you have a great day.